Well, hello there. Uh, welcome back to another live. I'm Brad Kasten, and uh, we're going to talk about some inexpensive uh, pouring surfaces, and uh, especially a hack I have developed. Um, if you want to keep your pouring surface like super, super inexpensive, I think this will work for you. Um, it's great for practicing or if you're just starting out um, and you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on canvases, like especially stretched canvases, um, this, I think you're going to love this hack. Um, so, you know, we're talking about, you know, pouring, paint pouring. Uh, there's a few surfaces that um, are most popular. Stretched canvases uh, are probably the most popular um, and you can get them in some bargain packs. Uh, I use them all the time. Like there's, this is a example. This one is a Michaels um, value pack. And this isn't actually um, a newer one I haven't seen before, eight by eight. Uh, and you get 12 of these in a pack. And these are usually around 10 to $12. Um, so this is about, this is a little less than a dollar a canvas. Um, but if you're just starting out and you don't know if you want to pursue this long term or you don't want uh, to spend a lot of money on canvases or you just don't want or have room for tons of canvases um, because they do take up a lot of space after a little while, um, then I think this hack is going to be great. Uh, so if you are joining me and if you run into it or have any questions, please throw them in the comment box and I'll answer them. Um, so stretch canvas, that's kind of what I recommend uh, for people first starting out. It's relatively inexpensive, but it does take up a lot of space. Um, canvas panels are another um, surface that a lot of people, especially beginners, try. Canvas panels are great for certain types of things. They're not so great for paint pouring because uh, they're going to warp uh, on you when they dry because there's a thin, like a uh, plastic or a thin cardboard backing. And when you're pouring all that paint on there, it's so much moisture, um, that panel just absorbs it and it just will fold right up like a potato chip almost. So, and you can try to bend them back. Um, it can work sometimes, not always. It's just a very difficult surface uh, to paint on. Um, and they're more affordable than stretch canvas, which is, I, I think that's why they are, they're such a draw because you're like, oh, I can get a whole bunch of canvas panels for not that much money, but they're just very difficult to um, work with. So what I'm going to show you today is um, a very inexpensive alternative to both of those, to canvas panels and to stretch canvas, but you do need to have at least one or two stretched canvases on hand. And hey, Linda, thanks for uh, joining us. That's awesome. And we're just getting started. Um, so you do need to have, for this hack, you do need to have at least one or two uh, stretch canvases um, or even a few more. And you can even leave them in the plastic, which is great. So you can just leave them wrapped if you want and save them for down the road when you're a little more experienced. So that's the first thing you need. Um, some stretch canvas or a um, canvas panel. This is a cradled wooden uh, canvas panel. Hey, Navala, thanks for joining us. Um, these are fantastic for what we're going to be talking about today because it's a rigid surface. So you'll understand what I mean in a second. So you're going to need uh, a canvas panel or a stretch canvas. And we're going to need my favorite thing in the world, freezer paper. And freezer paper is what we're going to be pouring on. And uh, it's the shiny side out. So freezer paper, I use it all the time. You can find it at Walmart or other grocery stores. It's very affordable. It comes in a great big old roll for about $7. And it has got a really shiny surface on one side and more of a paper surface on the other side. But the great thing about it is it doesn't absorb the paint when we pour on it. So what we're going to do is basically wrap uh, our canvas, a stretch canvas or a cradled panel in our freezer paper, kind of like you're wrapping a, like a present, and we're going to pour right on that. And it's, when it dries, you, you can peel the paper right off, 
and you've got this perfect little painting on a piece of paper. So it is fantastic for beginners or if you want to practice new techniques or you're just experimenting, it's a super affordable way uh, to do a lot of pouring without spending a lot of money or uh, having all these canvases take up all this room. So, and I did a little quick calculation. So for um, an eight by 10, you can get about a hundred and, hey, hey, Jordy, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Um, you can get about 115, I think, uh, paintings um, out of a roll of freezer paper. So it's about like seven cents uh, of paper that you're using. So you can get a lot of paintings done uh, with some freezer paper. So I'm going to walk you through the process. It's very simple. And then I'm going to show you an example of what this looks like uh, when the painting is dry. So I've already wrapped up one canvas. This is a 12 by 12 and uh, just a, one of these bargain or value pack canvases. And I've wrapped it in the freezer paper. You can kind of see the back. I just use masking tape and it's just wrapped up like a present and you want to kind of wrap it really tightly. So, and this is, you know, fairly, fairly tight, but it's nice and smooth. And you can, we're just going to pour right on that, just like you're pouring uh, on a regular canvas. So here is a, uh, this is just an eight by 10 um, in the uh, plastic. I haven't taken the plastic off, so you can just leave the plastic right on. And here is the cradle panel again. These are great uh, for this particular technique because they're so rigid. So. I'm going to switch the camera and then I'll just show you how I wrap up uh, one of these canvases in our freezer paper. So, and again, if you have any questions, um, just throw them up there in the comments. Okay, so here is our second camera. Let me take this banner off the screen and get rid of that. All right. So we've got our piece of paper and I've already cut this piece of freezer paper. It's just like a couple inches bigger in all directions. I didn't measure it or anything. I just eyeballed this. So what we're going to do, and you notice um, this is the shiny side right here. You can see the shininess. We're going to put that down because we want the shiny side facing outwards. That's what we're pouring on. So just one second. All right. So now what we're going to do, we're going to wrap up the long sides first. So you just take and fold the paper up. Now you can use like uh, some scotch tape. Scotch tape works just great. Um, I've got some uh, masking tape. I'm going to use that because I've got it in this handy dandy uh, little dispenser. So what I'm going to do is just tape on the sides just like this. And again, we want this fairly tight. And then I'm going to put one in the middle. And if you're working on a little larger canvas, you could maybe put a couple in the middle. Then I'm going to flip this around. And again, pull that, pull that tight. Oops. And then just taper down. Just like this. So there's a little tiny bit of work involved in preparing your canvas, but it's not too bad and you get pretty quick with it. Okay, so we've got the two long sides. Now I'm going to just fold over, just like I'm wrapping a Christmas present, I'm going to fold over the edges, kind of just like that, and pull it up. And put a piece here and a piece here and then one down the middle here and then the other side do the same thing so just fold that in pull it up So this is not, you know, very difficult. This is just pretty straightforward. And there we go. We're done. We are ready with our um, uh, panel. It's all wrapped. 
and that is pretty pretty um, smooth on there. So you can kind of see what that looks like. I'm trying to get the glare, but that is nice and flat. Now the other optional um, step you could take is you could put some push pins in the in the corners just to elevate it up off of the surface. And that would also hold the um, uh, the paper in there a little bit a little bit better. So I'm going to flip the camera back quickly here. Okay, so we've got our panel all wrapped up and ready to go. We can pour on this now. And like I mentioned, you could put the push pins in the bottom if you wanted to. I'm not going to do that right here, um, but it works great. And then you can pour just like a regular canvas. And and then here is yours again. This is a stretched canvas um, that I've wrapped up. It's the same same thing. It just had happened to have the plastic on it, but the the canvas panel actually works much better. You could even do this on a uh, can um, a canvas panel. This is um, a cradled panel. Sorry, but you could even do this on a canvas panel if you wanted to. Um, but a cradle panel works I ideal for this because it's so rigid. You could even wrap a book if you wanted to, as long as it's rigid. But um, if it's a book you really want to read, you know, don't get paint on it. But um, this works fantastic. Now I'm going to show you a, a sample painting. Here is a painting that I did on the paper. So this is just regular old freezer paper. And let me flip the camera again. I can give you a closer look at the painting. So here's the back side of the freezer paper. This is just the, the papery side. And here is the painting. And it dries great. So one thing that it will do uh, after, when you're pouring on the, on the paper and tilting a little bit, it might start to slightly buckle. Um, but don't worry about that because it, once it dries, it will dry nice and flat and smooth. So this one is, it's hard to show on the camera, but it is a pretty smooth, um, flat piece of paper. So, and that, it works really, really well. So, and you can see kind of the fold marks down here. I had it folded on a nine by 12. This is a nine by 12 painting. Um, but it's such a great, easy way to get a, a pouring surface that is really affordable. Also, you don't have to worry so much about wrecking a canvas because all you got is maybe 10 cents of freezer paper. So, and of course you got the paint, but you don't have to worry about um, scraping a canvas off or wrecking one. Um, and you can just toss it if you wanted to, or just put it in a book, um, put it in a file folder and you've got, you can keep hundreds of paintings uh, or nice and orderly. So that's pretty much it for this live. Um, uh, now what, why would you really want to do this? Now, I, I wouldn't recommend this as a replacement for stretch canvas um, because, you know, this is not an archival surface. Um, it's really, I designed this mostly for beginners or if you really want to practice. Um, let's see, Naval asked, uh, this is a good question, will it peel off if it gets damp? Um, well, the great thing about the freezer paper, um, it, it won't soak through the paper. Um, because, because of this, um, I don't know what kind of a, a coating they have on there, but it does not absorb into the paper. Um, but you could actually peel the painting off of the freezer paper once it's dry, um, if you wanted to. So you could actually kind of use this as like a, for pouring acrylic skins if you wanted to. Um, that's, that's optional thing. But uh, I don't think you really have to worry about um, the painting uh, like the paper disintegrating or something like that. Um, as long as you don't get paint all over the back of the paper. Now, if you get paint over the back of the paper, then um, like a whole bunch of water on that on the back, then it can have some issues. But um, just wrapping it up the way we have, I showed you, you don't really get paint all over the, the bottom like that. So I hope that answers your question, Novala. Good question. So, but that's, that's um, where was I before and if all asked. Uh, so yes, it's not a replacement for stretch canvas, um, but, but it's just a great 
uh, a great inexpensive way to practice or for beginners to not feel like um, really stressed out or uptight about you know wasting uh, surfaces or things like that. So finally, I think, let's see, we got another one. Um, so George asked, uh, do you ever frame one of the paper paintings? Well, you sure could. Um, now it isn't an archival um, paper, so it's not like acid, it's not an acid free paper, but you sure could um, trim it out and then just frame it like you would frame a photograph. That would be awesome actually, um, because those frames are pretty affordable. You could put you could put glass on top if you wanted to. I wouldn't, I'd probably put a spacer between the glass and the paint because you can get some issues with moisture um, if glass is right on the uh, acrylic. But you sure could frame this, yes. Um, that, would be, that would be a very gr good idea. That would make a great gift, I think. Um, so, uh, but that's just, I wanted to share with you just a very simple way of creating a lot of paint pouring surfaces if you don't want to spend a whole lot of money on a stretch canvas or don't have a whole lot of room on uh, for all these canvases that pile up and they do pile up after a while. So that's a good question. Um, so the last thing I wanted to mention is, let me bring this up. If you are new to acrylic paint pouring and kind of don't know where to start or are confused by all of the uh, different techniques or all of the different supplies you need, um, then I'd like to show you, uh, I have a mini course that is, you can find it at uh, acrylicpouringacademy.com forward slash FP dash mini dash course. It is my foolproof pouring mini course. And it is uh, really takes you step by step, uh, a beginner through all of the basic supplies you need. Um, and we use craft paints and we use uh, school glue, Elmer's school glue in that course. And so we use very inexpensive ingredients so you can get your feet wet with paint pouring. Um, we, I recommend uh, using the stretch canvases, but this would be perfect for that course. You could just get a couple canvases and then just wrap them up in the freezer paper and uh, do all your paintings like that until you're comfortable moving forward with uh, maybe a little bit more expensive materials. So if you want to go check out the course, um, it's $18 currently. Um, and it, it walks you through the, all everything you need to know, all the supplies. I show you how to mix your paint, the paint consistency. Um, and it is a pretty foolproof way, um, you know, foolproof way of, uh, getting started in paint pouring. And I'm, adding some more lessons to that course as we speak. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm working with um, adding silicone to the paint mixture and the glue mixture. So um, you're, you can find out how to make these really awesome um, silicone cells with the glue. So I'm working on that currently. That's underway. But as soon as I launch that, um, I'm going to raise the price of, of that course. So now is a great time to jump in there and all of the updates uh, will be free of charge, of course, if you're a member of that course. So uh, if you want, to, I'll also throw the uh, link in the chat. So if you wanna go check it out, um, I've gotten great responses from that course from other members and they have learned a lot. And for some of them, it's, it's um, their first time doing any paint pouring and they've gotten some pretty great results. So uh, if you're brand new to paint pouring and you don't know where to start, that course might be the perfect uh, way to get into um, acrylic paint pouring. So if you ha don't have any other questions, I don't see any other questions. Um, I appreciate you stopping by and checking out my little hack for inexpensive acrylic pouring surfaces. And, uh, oh, here's, oh, that's uh, George again, okay. Well, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next uh, live video, maybe Monday, I think. I think I'll take Sunday off, you know, get a little um, recuperation. So I will uh, see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.